Hello, what's up everyone? I'm here to show you my engineer build. The idea behind this build is to be able to counter any of your opponent attack uh, while forcing them to be defensive and at the same time apply a lot of condition pressure. As an engineer, uh, we have access to almost every condition in the game with short cooldowns and a big variety of skills. Uh, the strengths of this build is being able to stack many conditions in a short amount of time with a decent duration uh, when needed, you can block for 4.5 seconds and even uh, block for another 3 seconds when it comes to ranged attacks. We also have a lot of healing capabilities and the possibility to burst heal when needed. And one of the biggest things as a solo roamer, we are able to get reliable short cooldown stealth. Starting up with the traits, our base build has 20 points in explosives. We want to get forceful explosives to get that bigger bomb and mine radius. This will make it much harder for our enemies to escape our bomb fields. Second, we'll get incendiary powder. This allows us for a long burning uptime. In combination with your rocket kick and your firebomb, this should be a permanent burning on your enemy. Uh, for firearms, we take hair trigger. The main reason why I went into firearms is to get sharpshooter. Uh, this applies bleeding on a 33% chance every time we crit. Uh, so this is a, a decent way of of adding even more Condi pressure. We move on to Alchemy. In Alchemy we take 20 points. Uh, our main important one is Invigorating Speed, which gives us the Viger every time we apply Swiftness. And a second one will go for Protection Injection. Gain protection whenever you are disabled, which gives us a 3.5 second protection, which is a 33% uh, incoming damage reduction. This is a very important trait for the main reason because in my main build I won't be running any stun breaks and I need this extra protection. If I do get screwed up and I get stunned, uh, this protection, this trait helps me survive the incoming damage after we get disabled. And as a final, we have tools. In tools, we'll take speedy kits. This is the one that gives us our permanent swiftness. It links together with invigorating speed. So every time we switch to a kit, uh, we'll get the swiftness and it will activate the Viger buff. We have 10 points remaining. Uh, for the last 10 points, it's really up to you. Uh, you can uh, customize it as much as you want. If I had to give you a few suggestions, in the Grandmaster trade, um, there's a really good one, which is called Short Fuse, which reduces the recharge time on bombs and grenades. You will be able to cast your bombs much more often. Under Inventions, there's also a trade that I would really suggest if you're a bit more of a trollist player, uh, if you like to to use the map uh, to your full advantage, like jumping off cliffs and stuff like that. It's called Explosive Descent, and the main reason why we want to take this trait is the damage reduction with fall damage. So every time you gain fall damage, you will uh, take 50% less damage. I use this in a very trollish way. I jump off cliffs, and when my opponent sees that I have 40% health left or 50% health left, they usually think it's safe to jump after me. I actually can't really count the amount of times where somebody just jumped after me and they just died instantly. For alchemy, there there's also a really good one, and this is one of my favorite ones to take. Uh, it's called automated response. Condition durations are reduced while below the health threshold. So whenever we get below 25% health, uh, we become condition immune. This this means that any conditions applied before 25% health um, are are still active. So they will be still active, and you will have to cleanse them. But any new conditions that we get. Uh, will not be applied because of our Condi immunity. So if you're up against a Necromancer, you're below that 25% threshold, just keep your health below that. And they won't be able to apply as much pressure as they want to. And especially with the full condition Necromancers, they won't be able to touch. On our tools, uh, there's another trait that I would suggest, which is the Power Rens. This allows you to uh, cripple your opponents with your throw Ren skills and your smack. That's your melee attack and the t under the toolkit. Uh, but also allow you to um, use your toolkit abilities much more often, which means you get uh, more protection with the blocking and even more uh, confusion appliance with the magnet and the pry bar combo. Under uh, our armors and weapons, uh, we will be going for full rabbit, so that's precision, toughness, and condition damage. I personally think this is the best set that you could get for your engineer. Uh, now, I understand there's a few people that think dire might be a good combination with rabbit, but I personally think that the vitality is useless. Um, like mainly because as an engineer, we already start at 17,000 health. Um, so we have already a decent amount of health to survive most enemy bursts. And having all the toughness that we have from the rabbit set already mitigates enough damage for us to survive against uh, multiple enemies. When you actually have a long fight, uh, the vitality will be a stat that would have lost its value. 
I, I could understand if it's all short fights and the vitality could be a big boost, but in long fights, and that's, I'm, I'm not really focused on having short fights. I'm, I'm focused on getting the most out of my build. So the failure right here is giving us ourselves precision. This precision will increase our damage by the crits that we get, but also proc all our other abilities uh, much more often. Uh, for the rune setup, uh, there's actually multiple choices. You could go for the superior rune of the undead, which increases your condition damage by an immense amount. Also increases your condition damage based on the toughness that you have. And giving you some extra bonus toughness. So it's a freaking amazing uh, rune. If you wanted to have an easy mode rune, one where you could easily beat most people in 1v1, then you could go for the rune of perplexity. Uh, which gives you uh, confusion stacks based on the interrupts that you apply. I still feel that rune is a little bit overpowered, so I'm I'm not going to use it myself. But if they balance the rune more, then I will be uh, switching over to that. Okay, so for the weapons, we want to go for pistol and shield. Mainly because this weapon combination gives us the most utility out of all the other weapon sets. I completely disagree with using a second pistol. Uh, because if you use a second pistol, you'll miss out on having the stun from your static shield. Your dazes that you can use to interrupt your opponents. You also lose a knockback, uh, which your number 4 skill has. Plus a blast finisher uh, from your number 4. Just to get that extra burning and cripple. I, I honestly, to me, it's the, uh, the best set there is right now. The rifle itself puts you at a very, a very vulnerable position. It doesn't allow you to react as much as the uh, pistol and shield combo. Uh, with the pistol, we'll have poison application with the poison darts. We have a blind and confusion stacking with the static shot. Uh, a knockback on our number 4 skill. Range reflect for 3 seconds if needed. And we have a stun on melee range or um, a 1 or 2 second days. Uh, for the sigils, we'll take the sigil of uh, torment. Uh, on the weapon, uh, which has a 30% chance to to trigger an AOE torment for 8 seconds with a 7 second cooldown. So that's pretty much permanent torment. Uh, I use this to just add in that extra uh, condition so uh, it, it's much harder for the enemy to remove our conditions. Uh, plus it's some decent damage. Uh, for our shield I use the Sigil of Bursting. Uh, Sigil of Bursting increases our condition damage by 6%. It's a nice damage bonus, especially when you have a lot of condition damage already. Uh, another sigil that I would suggest, if you had a hard time hitting your poison darts, you can go for the sigil of doom, uh, which allows you to apply poison on weapon swap, so you can keep your poison permanently up. For our utilities, we'll take the healing turret. Uh, it's one of the most amazing healing skills. The healing turret, if you activate it twice, it'll activate a cleansing burst, which will remove... Uh, two conditions, so this will cure two conditions. This is our main condition removal. And also drop uh, a water field, which you can combo on if needed. And the water field allows you to get extra area healing. What you normally want to do is pick up the turret as soon as you use the cleansing burst. Uh, this will give you a shorter cooldown on your skill. If you do not pick up the turret, you can also explode it with your F1 skill. And this will give you a, a, a blast finisher, which will give you a little bit of extra healing. So if you were really close to that, I really suggest to do that. But it will give you a 5 second longer cooldown. So it does have its down part. For our uh, first utility, I use rocket boots. Uh, rocket boots allows me to have a very responsive escape. This jumps you forward while also giving you a blast finisher. So you can even use this with uh, any of your healing skills. Uh, it also cures immobilize, cripple, and chill. So if somebody did root you up, if somebody did cripple you or chill you, you can just use rocket boots to escape plus uh, cure those uh, things. And on top of this, the tool belt skill will give you a burning, which is a 6 second burning. Uh, it's a decent burning duration with an 18 second cooldown. For our second utility skill, we will go for the bomb kit. The bomb kit uh, gives us the opportunity to get burning damage in AoE, confusion, a smoke field, and cripple. It's freaking amazing. Plus a big bomb to use uh, for knockback. And also counts as a blast finisher. Although it does have a few seconds that you have to wait for. And the main reason why I go for the bomb kit is the concussion bomb. Uh, which applies 5 stacks of confusion. So if an enemy is close by you can use that to stack up confusion to your enemy. Um, and the smoke field which will give us reliable stealth. Uh, if you use any blast finishers in combination with your smoke field. And the more blast finishers you use the longer your stealth will be. For the final utility, we'll take the toolkit. The toolkit is probably also one of the most important utilities that we have. It gives us the opportunity to block for 3 seconds, while also giving us our initiator skill, uh, which is called the magnet. This pulls your target to yourself, 
on a 1200 range it's freaking amazing you can use this in combination with the pry bar so you pull your opponent first and then you use your pry bar to deal uh, a decent amount of base damage plus five stacks of confusion or even use it to interrupt uh, your opponents from their abilities and as a bonus we have a tool belt skill which is called the throw rents you can throw this through any of your fields uh, to gain specific bonuses in the water field you get regeneration in your fire field you will get a burning on your enemy and in your smoke field you will get um, blinding i will be going more specific in the combos uh, in a later video then we have our elite which is the only choice i honestly don't think any of the other elites come even close to the utility of this elite it's called the supply crate this stuns for two seconds in aoe and also drops down three turrets one is a flame turret the other a healing and a net turret which is a really good way of keeping your opponent disabled if he tries to escape or even buy yourself some time it also drops around six med kits uh, which you can use to heal yourself which is a nice extra burst healing if you did get pressured um, by your opponents thank you for watching i hope my build helps you out if you have any suggestions for future content um, I'll gladly hear them. Uh, just send me a private message or even respond in the comments and I'll be reading all of them.